Good morning. This is... <laughs> this is July 10th, 2019. And I'm going to ramble for a few minutes. I want to present to you, as I have in the past, Ron de Bordeaux. And I've talked about this fig in the past quite a bit because if it isn't my favorite fig, if I had to just choose one, it's darn close. I'd say it is. If I had to just choose a fig for the Northeast, for New Jersey, where I live, Zone 7A, with all the crappy weather we get, the humidity and the rains and the cold winters, this is a good one. This is, this is a fig that you can count on. And you can see why. This is a small tree. This tree is only in its third year. And last year, I cut it back all the way to this point. Let me show you. Here, I cut it back all the way, right to, right to there. You can see where it was, right here. Because it was getting a little tall, and I wanted figs. I don't want just tree. So I cut it here, about two feet from the ground, and it made lots and lots of branches. And all of these branches will support figs because my trees are well cared for. They will support figs and they will produce. Honestly, tender loving care goes a long way. Love your figs, love them, they'll love you back. Now, that was a year ago when I cut that. So there was, there was nothing. And the branches grew last year and it produced a ton of figs. I like to use that expression. You have to forgive me for that. That's what I want. I want fig trees that produce figs. And I want fig trees that produce figs early. Early, early, early. That's... That's what makes growing figs successful, at least in New Jersey or in the northeast eastern United States. Unfortunately, we don't have weather like they have in California. <clears throat> Wouldn't it be nice? So in the northeast, we have to choose varieties that are suitable to our climatic conditions. This is just to keep the birds off, and it works real well. Birds don't like owls. It will only work for a while, so you have to use different methods, and I can get into that sometime. And uh, maybe I'll show you another procedure that I use. But I don't have a lot of trouble with birds. Sometimes. Is another method. I only have one in a little bag here, which I don't need because they're not bothering my figs this time. But they did earlier in the year, and I protected them. And then they went away. I let the birds have a few. Hey, they're just hungry. And I share as long as they behave themselves. But look, here I've got an air layer because I love this variety so much. I've got seven of these trees, seven. And as I said before, I, I grow them in a procession at different stages so that, so that I can do different things with them. I've got them in containers, I've got them in my, I use my 
ground bag technique. I've got them in the ground in bags, which is almost like having it in the ground like this tree for better taste and vigor. But notice how I don't have a lot of excess branches. I don't have a lot of branches growing all over the place. This tree is loaded with fruit. Look at it. Look at all the fruit on this tree. And I've eaten them. This, these have been producing for a week. And my son's been coming over and eating them. I'm eating them. Maybe the birds are getting one or two or here or there. But look at all these figs. This, this is what you want to strive for. You want figs. You want to grow figs. You don't want to grow a tree. And you want the figs to be early. Early, early, early. I just can't stress that enough. Now look, I, I don't, uh, I've been asked, I, I don't sell trees and I don't sell cuttings. So, for the record, I do not. I'm just a home grower. I've always loved figs all my life. I'm infatuated with them. I love them. They're delicious. They're healthy. Mine are completely organic. And I'm just doing it to get information out there to people that want to start a little fig collection or grow one tree in their yard or grow more. And there are so many wonderful varieties out there to choose from and there's plenty being made available to anybody that's interested. And that's the beauty. I can remember the days when, when that wasn't so. When it was kind of lonely out there being a fig enthusiast. I come from an Italian family and yes, we were always fig enthusiasts, but there weren't too many. Hold on a second here. Let me take this bag off. Don't need it. And I have a feeling I'm going to be devouring this fig very shortly. Oh, there it goes. There we go. What a beauty. Look at that. Look at that fig. Rondi Bardot is not a very large fig, but it's, hey, it's a couple bite fools there. My favorite candy is pecan turtles. Milk chocolate pecan turtles. And they're not real big. They don't have to be as big as a loaf of bread to enjoy. I enjoy one at a time. <laughs> and this fig. Let me see if I can just tear this fig open. Let's see. There we go. It's kind of hard. There's Rondi Bardot. And what a delicious fig it is. Look at these beautiful cracks which indicate how ripe these figs are I've been gobbling them up and I just want to share this information with you so that you can do this too you just need to want to you need to want to do it you need to want to have a fig that will produce for you and there are others so Please don't misread my intentions here. I've talked about Celeste. What a wonderful, underestimated, underappreciated tree Celeste is because it produces like this too. Different figs of a different nature, but they're sweet and delicious and they do have a distinctive taste. Another Let's take a little walk, maybe. Maybe we'll take a little walk. I wasn't really going to uh, make this video too long. You keep doing your job there, buddy. Uh, here, I've got a little falcon on the ground. And over here, I've got a, another owl. And take a little walk. There's some larger trees I have growing up against the house. There's my Peter's honey over there. I've got some some other trees here that are going to produce a lot of fruit. And I'm really looking forward to it at different stages. And that's why I always have figs coming in 
this is another smaller Peter's honey and this is this is a tree that I would want to recommend to people out there I love Peter's honey that's a honey fig but it it has an intense flavor it's not a sugar fig here is I don't know why I have these bags on here but let me let me pick this fig These are Breba, the first figs on last year's wood, not on new wood. And so, let's go over here. There's plenty of figs on here. This little tree, I've got larger trees, beautiful. Peter's honey, I recommend it. And the main crop figs, they come later than Ron de Bordeaux, but they come in time. And it's still warm enough for quality figs to ripen. If, if you have trees that ripen too late, it's so counterproductive. Because you want your figs, you want varieties that will produce figs early in the season. Like it's July 10th. And the nights are warm. Actually, last night was kind of chilly. But, but the nights are generally warm and the days are hot and dry. That's the best time. If you have figs that get ripe in September or October, and some in November, the nights are cold and it's the rainy season. and You're not going to have quality figs. And, and how many figs are you really going to get on those varieties? Are you going to be able... Like this is... This is a fig that you can count on. Another fig that you can count. I wasn't going to talk about this today. And this, these have been beaten up. These are large leaves. The leaves are large and I've had terrible storms this year. And the wind's beating them up and it, it's not going to hurt them. This is LSU Tiger. And it's a, a light fig. It is not a honey fig. It's sort of a honey fig and a berry, honey berry, but it, the point is, it's very delicious. It is delicious. And it is early. These are going to begin getting ripe very soon. There's, there's no question. I, I've grown this variety. Last year, they were delicious. It's a, it's a winter hardy fig, like Rondi Bordeaux. I haven't talked about this one too much. But this is one of my favorites. I, I, I highly recommend LSU Tiger. Look how many figs on this little tree. Look, just look at it. And once again, I'm not growing tree. I'm growing figs. And you can do it. Anybody can. I'll talk about the techniques maybe in additional videos because I, I love this hobby. I've always loved growing figs and I just want to get information out there. Let's take a walk over here. I, I've talked about this tree and I've recommended it. And this is Champagne, LSU Champagne. Remember, I've spoken about this. The LSU figs, I, I'm just, I'm a fan. I'm a big fan of the LSU figs. Dr. O'Rourke, his, his program out of the University of Louisiana. And he used Celeste in the parentage. And there's a good reason, and I've spoken of that. Because Celeste is early, it's hardy, it's closed-eyed, it's rain-resistant, weather-resistant, it's extremely productive. And out of that program has come wonderful figs like Improved Celeste, O'Rourke, Tiger, Champagne, and the list goes on. LSU Purple, there's plenty of them, and they're all good. Mostly all good. Just a few that I wouldn't recommend, but the ones I mentioned are all really good. Now here's a fig you can count on. 
this is a Mount Etna type, and this one is called Malta Black. And Malta Black is very productive, and I highly recommend the Mount Etna types because depending on like what your flavor preferences are, though, because it's not my top flavor preference but flavor is subjective so but it's a pretty intense berry flavor and i tend to like honey berry more or you know less intense berries i want trees that produce lots of figs and i want figs that i can enjoy eating a whole bunch of and not just eat a few and say oh these are these are so rich i, I don't want to eat any more of these today believe me i always want to eat more figs but Malta Black is like a hearty Chicago, but I think it tastes a little sweeter. Hardy Chicago is a great fig for anybody's backyard. You've probably heard about this fig so many times. I've talked about other fig varieties that are Mount Etna types, but Malta Black is one that I certainly recommend for in the Northeast. It's a fig you can count on. Let's take a little walk. Well, maybe first I should, let's see here. Let's get back to this fig. Let's get back to Rondi Bardot. Let me, let me taste this. Mmm, wow. Mmm, <laughs> this is, Mm. That is delicious. Let's take a look at this. I'm going to have to put this camera down just for a second. Okay. This is Peter's honey. A couple of little ants here. In good shape though. Let me see if I can tear this open. It's so hard to do. There we go. Peter's honey. This one I maybe left a little too long, but I bet you it's just as sweet as honey but with a rich, intense flavor. Let's see. Give it a taste. Mm. Oh, that's sweet and delicious. That is delicious. Mmm. Mmm. You know, if you live in the Northeast, if you live in zone 7a or warmer grow peter's honey it is a superb cultivar it's vigorous it is healthy it is extremely productive extremely productive it's early enough if you can find a sweet spot, it's better, like up against the house, south wall. But you don't need to. It'll get, it'll get ripe. They might not all get ripe in that situation, but they will if you put them up in the sweet spot. Mm, that is so delectable. Oh, my. So high. I just, it's, it's superb. Delicious. I'm going to take a little walk. I'm making this video way too long. Here's a little, another method for the birds, and it... Trust me, it worked. This is a thin net, a thin bird net. Now, this blueberry is all finished producing, but the birds didn't get very many of them. I share a few. They're welcome to them because I get 95%. But you can throw this little net over that little tree, and you're going to have great results because the fish, <laughs> the fish, <laughs> wow. I just got back from fishing, but the 
birds, they don't they don't like getting their feet tangled in that net. They they hate that net. And you can raise the net a little bit by just pounding in a little rebarb and tying the net on top, making a little tent. You can form a little tent. But you don't have to because they don't like that net. They don't like getting their feet caught. Very often I'll come outside and there's a bird caught and I have to release them. I'm gonna just speak very briefly. Let me, this is a, a wonderful variety that I recommend for the Northeast. Grow this one. If you only have room for one or two, pick some good ones like Celeste and Rondi Bordeaux. But there's plenty of good ones. I want you to understand that. And you can find these figs. There's some great places. I mean, there's great guys that are selling these figs. This one was discovered by Big Bill at Off the Beaten Path Nursery near Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Wonderful guy, honest seller. He found this fig and started to distribute it and he calls it Taramo place in Italy that's where the lady said it came from Taramo unknown this is a wonderful fig and you can see why look at it look how many figs are on this little fig this was a this was a cutting last spring <laughs> look at it producing and that's what you want you want figs that produce you know, you don't want figs that you're going to care for them for a whole year and get six figs in September or October. Trust me. Now, once you have, if you have room, and if those figs are specialty figs and you want to enjoy them, then by all means, I have specialty figs. And I'm not telling you not to buy and, or, or grow specialty figs. I'm just simply saying, if you want, if you're a backyard grower and you can only have room for one or two figs, then grow some figs you can count on in this climate. Look, look at all these little figs that are growing here. They're all going to get ripe. They're all going to get ripe this season. Now, these are going to be later on, much later. But they'll be, they're be, uh, they're be getting ripe. But see these in different stages. They're all going to get ripe.